Good afternoon. My name is Jacinta Sutton. I'm a project officer, a QANSAC project officer with uh, Discovery Services here at the State Library of Queensland. And I'm going to be talking to you about uh, our partnership with the Australian War Memorial and Open Data. So a fundamental aspect of Open Data is that it's available in a format that allows other people to reuse it and remix it. So how can you share nearly 30,000 records of World War, Sol World War I soldiers easily? You create and release a data set on the state and Commonwealth open data portals. So metadata from the portraits was extracted from Digital, our digital asset management software. And uh, these records are a combination of 28,000 National Archives of Australia uh, catalog and catalog record metadata that existed from the ingest of these portraits into the catalog and a collaborative project with the National Archives. So in the beginning, the text looked like this. Multiple heading fields, uh, multiple headings in a field separated, separated by a tilde, fields delimited by uh, inverted commas and separated by commas. And text CSV is mostly preferred by programmers, but it's not ideal for a data set. So we had to clean the data and put it into Excel so that it can be then manipulated again to build apps and websites and used in visualization and um, other analyzing situations. So once it's in Excel, we need to clean it to make it possible for other people to find it and remix it in a clear and structured way. So the benefits of open data come often from the ability to analyse and remix it alongside other data sets, which I think Corin spoke of earlier. Um, looking at the data this way, it's easier to identify errors, isolate them and fix them. And much like Nathaniel spoke of earlier with the Real Estate Maps project, we came across errors and inconsistencies, including formatting anomalies, especially within the date fields, uh, merged fields, missing fields, concatenated subject headings, and separated additional information fields. Zoom in on that bad boy. So we fix these errors, which is the most time-consuming part that requires close attention to detail and an awareness of open data publishing standards. Essentially, large chunks of data like this are pretty inanimate without the human components of ideas, drive, creativity, and deadlines. So the difference when creating an open data set is that you have um, a set of parameters that you need to apply in order to publish your data, or that you need to adhere to, I should say. So you need to determine its classification, be able to apply an open license, uh, publish the most machine readable and open format for your data, and you need to consider how it's going to be most useful. So we organised the um, fields, the data into fields, as you can see on the table on the right hand side here, information about the portrait, the soldier, dates, source links, identifiers, conditions of use, copyright, publisher, and the resolution of the images. And this was following the standards and guidelines provided by the government portals, sorry. And we organised the data once, and then many people can benefit from it. And supplying our data to the portals provides transparency but also allows people to experiment with, experiment with it and build it into interesting ways that people can discover our collections. Okay. So far, there have been 486 views, 203 visits, and 137 resource downloads of the open data set. And uh, so that's since it was uploaded in March. Most significantly, the Australian War Memorial used the data set in their new website. So they've pulled it into their new interface so that links now take you through to a high-res version of the portrait and also the page view of the portrait in the State Library catalogue. And people can see it and download it. And for relatives, uh, often it's the first time that they might have seen uh, an image of their, uh, their relative. Uh, Ancestry.com is also inter interested in using the data set in the free access area of their site. And iHero, it's a facial recognition app that was used, uh, that used the first iteration of the data set, which was 8,000 records, and that was developed through GovHack last year. So there's a case study on our website if you'd like to know more about iHero. And our updated soldier portrait data set is up just in time for GovHack at the end of this month, so we're pretty excited to see what people do with it. 
And on the right hand side there is the licensing information we applied to make sure the data set was available for people to go out and make fantastic things. Thank you.